It's not every day or even every year we get to witness a new original sci-fi classic emerge from the ether. Mass media is riddled with adaptations, remixes, and reboots. And what's worse is truly original sci-fi often struggles to gain a footing and successfully wow audiences as well as become the cultural benchmark it could have been. I'm looking at you, creator, and raised by wolves. And I'm sorry, dances with wolves with blue cats doesn't count. Fight me. So here we are, all together, basking in the creative force of nature and xenobiology. That is Scavenger's Reign, a soul flower emerging from the husk of zombie fungus imposters. While the influences are highly evident, two examples being Mobius graphic novels, the original Alien film, and the Xenomorph, the creators managed to harness these influences into something wholly its own and we are all the better for it. If you loved this show, tell us about it in the comments below. What are your takeaways? What are your favorite moments? I wanna hear them. Also, at the time of writing, HBO Max hasn't ordered a second season, so we need to help push it over the edge. First, go tell all your friends and family who might be into sci-fi, survival horror, and or animation. Not one person I've recommended it to hasn't enjoyed it. Next, post about it on social media. Use hashtags, screenshots from the show, share your joy to others to get the word out. The amount of comments I saw from people who never heard of it but were excited to discover it delighted me greatly. And finally, like this video if you love Scavenger's Reign. It'll push the video higher in the great space god that is the YouTube algorithm, and more like-minded lovers of sci-fi will come across it and in turn will likely prompt them to watch the series. All of this will have the positive cumulative effect of getting us all more Scavenger's Reign. Don't let Space Bobby Hill win. So in that vein, from here on out, there be spoilers ahead, Space Cowboys for the final batch of episodes number 10 through 12. We finally got to see the moment Ozzy connected with her frozen popsicle lady friend, and this, without a doubt, was some of the best dialogue in the show. Human, tender, exciting, and a wonderful reprieve and reminder for what's at stake for Ozzy. And it turns out I was wrong. Chris didn't pull shenanigans on Ozzy, but in fact, Ozzy went full aggro and kind of forced her hand. We see and know Chris is not universally good whatsoever, because she has no interest in saving dozens of lives that she easily could. But Ozzy came on a bit too hard, too early, and that definitely bit her in the ass. Hollow, aka Chonkers, aka insert your own hilarious name here, made it to the Demeter and came across Fiona's body. A few of you in the comments expanded my comprehension of Cayman and Hollow's behavior, which helped me make more sense of what transpired here. Hollow may not be inherently sentient or even evil. Its emotional state and desires are heavily influenced by Cayman's emotional guilt and pity, which led both to a significant amount of violence. Hollow acting in aggression mirrors Cayman's, and when it went after Levi, aka Fiona's voice, it was acting in a symbiotic self-preservation mode, similar to how it acted maliciously toward the other big Hollow in the beginning of the series. There's more to discuss here, and I may need another watch to fully sit with what was happening with Cayman here and at the end. Expect more videos analyzing Scavenger's Reign, its spirituality, and the like. So subscribe if you'd like to see more. Next, Sam unsurprisingly kicked the bucket. Although it feels like a slight missed opportunity for a Sam and Cayman reunion, how could two men racked with guilt and aggression over the Demeter's accident cope with surviving together after Chris abandoned them? Especially after Cayman is in some sort of catatonic state? It could have been super juicy but sadly not meant to be. So instead we were served with a beautiful sequence of Sam's end. This made me realize we don't know a whole lot about Ursula beyond being the ship's botanist and a kind soul. We have no indication of any kind of emotional baggage she was carrying. Also, perhaps most importantly, she has no guilt. Her spirit is free, making her likely to be one of the best candidates to lead and help this burgeoning colony of marooned Demeter survivors. And how can we not talk about the return of Levi? Perhaps, again, not the biggest surprise, but most certainly a welcome development. Her ambivalence toward Ursula was hilarious as well as insightful for the short segment that it was. But her final beat of coming to the rescue of Ozzy might be the most significant moment of the entire show. Not only does it solidify the importance of both of their arcs as integral, but it gave us our 2001 Space Odyssey segment combined with an evolutionary montage a la Darren Aronofsky's Noah. <laughs> The soul flowers are the generators of the fungus that gave Levi sentience, as well as a sort of evolutionary sieve to help life continue on the planet. It is the catalyst for adaptation and makes the ending montage sequences at the end of the earlier episodes so much more meaningful. But my absolute favorite segment in the finale has got to be the Marvel-esque postscript sequence of Chris being rescued by a space cult. 
Her navigation issues ended up being a much larger issue than she anticipated. Barry nabbing the soul flower from the Demeter caused the fungus to spread and likely disabled her ship. And surprise, we get a little baby plant Levi stowaway in the ship. Given that we saw Levi making babies after Chris left, I'm a little confused how a random plant growing on the Demeter wreckage would have the generative ability to make a mini-me baby Levi on board her shuttle, but I'm not too worried about it. Look, no show can ever be truly perfect, but Scavenger's Reign is so damn close to holding that mantle. What's most important is how it made you feel and think as an individual. For me, in terms of animation and the enjoyment I got from watching, I can easily put the series on par with Netflix's Cyberpunk Edgerunners, Castlevania, and Arcane. The best of the best. So in that vein, I give the final series a rating of five lovey faces out of five. But what about you? Are you relieved to have a breath of mind-blowing fresh air fill you with appreciation for some of the best sci-fi content in nearly a decade? Or were you like, meh, it's fine, I guess. Chime in the comments below. And my second favorite moment from the finale? Hollow reverting back to baby panda form, and instead of Levi and Ozzy justifiably killing it, they just tell it to scat, as if it were a raccoon on their back porch. Incredible.